Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing unto you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. How many of you have seen The Sound of Music? Most, probably, right? Do you remember that song? Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start, yes. Beginnings are an excellent place to start. And I think they can be really exciting too. The new year offers a new beginning for each one of us, a chance to wipe the slate clean, to make resolutions for a better year, for a better life. I think many of us were happy to ring in 2024 with hopes for healing, for resolutions, for getting better at something, or simply just hopes of starting fresh. Beginnings are grace-filled. Our scripture today from Mark is a beginning as well. Not only is it literally the beginning of the gospel of Mark, but it is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Now, fun fact, if you didn't know, Mark is actually the oldest gospel. And it was written by John Mark, who was a disciple of Peter, and probably written in Rome when Peter and Paul were starting the church there. It is also the shortest gospel. And the one from which Matthew and Luke take a lot of their material. But the most interesting thing about Mark's gospel is there's no birth narrative. And here we are. Fresh off of celebrating the birth of our Savior, and Mark includes nothing about the baby Jesus. Instead, Mark's gospel opens with Jesus' baptism. And his baptism marks the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. So let's talk about baptism. The gospel opens with John inviting other Jews to repent of their sins and return to God to be forgiven. John was offering them a new beginning with God. The Greek word used for repentance is metanoia, which means change of mind or change of direction. When one repents, truly repents, one is able to change one's life through the forgiveness of one's sins. And that change offers a new beginning. But this also begs the question, if Jesus was sinless and perfect, why did he need to be baptized? Have you ever wondered that question? Well, quite simply, so that we would know, without a doubt, that he is God's son. When Jesus was baptized, the heavens tore open, and God said, this is my son, with whom I am well pleased. And from that moment on, there was no denying Jesus' identity. It's a new beginning. Our baptism is a new beginning, too. In baptism, we die to our ways and we are raised in new life just like Jesus when we are baptized the Holy Spirit comes into us and remains with us and we too become children of God and hear those precious words that God is well pleased with us isn't that an exciting beginning To know that with our baptism, we begin a new life with Christ. But baptism is also not an individualistic activity. Have you noticed that when someone is baptized, it always takes place in a group? This is because 
baptism connects us to the universal church. We become a part of God's family. Each one of us becoming a child of God, no less loved and accepted than Jesus. This is also why we, as United Methodists, believe in infant baptism. Because the child who is baptized is welcomed into the larger family, God's family. A family that will help raise that child in a Christian life. But it matters not when you were baptized, whether as an infant, a young adult, or at age 80. Your baptism gives you a new identity, a new beginning. Henry Nouwen said it best. The truth, even though I cannot feel it right now, is that I am the chosen child of God, precious in God's eyes, called the beloved for all eternity, and held safe in his everlasting embrace. That feels really good, doesn't it? And that, right there, is why there is never a need to be re-baptized. On our birthday each year, we don't physically go through our birth again. That might be kind of weird, don't you think? Instead, we remember and celebrate our birth. And the same is true for baptism. We remember and celebrate our baptism, remembering that we are children of God and celebrating the gift of God's grace bestowed upon us at our own baptism. One Sunday, down by a river, a man stumbled onto a baptismal service being held by a local church. And the preacher looked at him and asked, are you ready to find Jesus? And the man responded, yes, I am. So the preacher takes him and immerses him in the water and he pulls him up and he says, have you found Jesus? And the man responds, no, no, I didn't. So the preacher takes him again and pushes him under the water again, holding him for a few seconds longer than the last time. And brings him up and says, okay, have you found Jesus now? And the man replies, no, no, I didn't. Well, by now, I am sure you can imagine that this preacher was a little flustered. But he takes the man again and dunks him under and holds him down for a good 30 seconds this time. And brings him back out of the water and says, now, now, have you found Jesus yet? <sighs> And the man's wiping his eyes and pushing back his hair. And he looks at the preacher and he says, Are you sure this is where he fell in? <laughs> now, of course, this is a joke. And I'm glad y'all laughed. <laughs> but it illustrates a really important point. We don't find Jesus in our baptism. Jesus finds us. And Jesus accepts us just the way we are. The grace which baptism makes available to us is that the atonement of Christ, which makes possible our reconciliation with God. And this is why it is so important to remember our baptism. Because every time we return to the baptismal waters, which we will do here in a moment, and we remember our baptism, we again claim our identity in Jesus as beloved children of God. Every time we return to these baptismal waters and remember our baptism, God again manifests and reveals God's self in our humanity. Every time we return to the baptismal waters and remember our baptism, we remember that first day of light and life and love, and the promise of all that might be. So whatever your life has been, or might be, right now, the baptismal waters are again waiting on you to return. 
to remember your baptism, to allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life, ridding you of all fear, all despair, and allowing you to begin again. So, in a few minutes, I will invite each one of you to remember your baptism as we reaffirm our baptismal covenant together. And if you haven't yet been baptized, I invite you to reach out to me. I would love to talk to you about that. In Jesus' name, we all say, Amen.